Hey you, you're listening to the Intentional Documentary Podcast. So glad to have you. Around here, I'm gushing over the stories behind the pictures that we freaking love of our own lives. You know, the ones we hold as high value and iconic, because this is where photography meets real life. I'm your host, Marie Moss, and I believe that the best way to approach your photography is through your lens, your way. Through insightful conversations with photographers, I'll explore preserving life with your camera and using what lights you up to grow your brand. Let's get started. Hey there, happy September. It's actually August, so that feels really, really weird to say. It is two weeks until my kids go back to school and I am doing some summer reflecting right now. I love to reflect at the end of every season. And I don't necessarily mean like mother nature changing of the seasons, but maybe it's been, I've been working through a big art project or work slash creative project or just full-time momming, or maybe it is the changing of the actual seasons. And I wanted to invite you along with me to do this because I like I would love to hear from you. I wish that we were sitting on a couch. I wish we were at a coffee shop or somewhere where I got to hear from you as well. So please send me an email at marie at fearlessandframed.com and, and let me know what's been going on with you. I'd, I'd on it like I'd truly love, love, love to hear from you. So I wanted to invite you along because I don't know how often you do this. I I hear people often reflect uh, like end of the year, they look back at their life for sure. And I know people reflect often when they've been working on work and business goals, but I like to blend it all together and I like to do it frequently because it just, it contributes to my level of awareness in my life, quite frankly. So I wanted to invite you along with me just, just so you can hear just some of the stuff that's in my head. And then after that, I have some questions, some Q&As, if you will, from our listeners. I had sent out a survey in, at the end of July, I think, or maybe it was the top of August, that went to the segment of my list of people who have been raising their hand for this new community space that's all around the heart of documenting. And I do mean documenting, not necessarily photography, like where we're focused on the stories and I'm totally getting off track right now. (laughs) But I sent this survey to this very small segment of my list because I wanted to dig deeper on the topic of noise and noticing. Like what is the noise that's in our heads? So I've gotten a lot of wonderful feedback on that. I'm sure I'll talk about all of that soon. But one of the questions in that survey was, do you have any questions for me about my life, about my work, anything that you're curious on? And I got a bunch of questions. So I thought that I'd start drawing from those and answering some questions once in a while, because it's just it's just fun. It's so fun to do this because I mean, most of the time I have a guest on or I just pick a topic and I, I start talking about it. So it's just really fun. I get, I feel like I get to have more of a conversation with you. So if you have any questions for me and it could be about anything, it could be about my life. It could be about business. It could be a burning question that you have on something that you're struggling with, like anything, send it to me, marie at fearlessandframed.com. And I'd absolutely love to hear from you on that. So I'll go through those questions at the end. So yeah, let's get to the reflection part. Like I said, it's almost back to school time here. It is, I do have two weeks left, so it's not like it's in two days. And I just, I think I'm in the mindset of reflection and planning ahead because I I have in-laws, my brother-in-law and his family are coming to visit in two days, well, three days actually, and they'll be here for a little over a week. And by the time they leave, we'll only have like three days left of the just us, just Dave, Kendall, Levi, and myself of summer. And then it's back to the routine of things, which I'm very much looking forward to right now because I'm so inspired and so 
on fire for this new brand I have been developing behind the scenes here, which you know all about if you listened to episode 56. And if you didn't, go back and listen to that episode. So I've just... I've been enjoying my summer for sure, but I am so excited about this new stuff. I just feel like it was so interesting. Chat books actually sent a survey out to their email list. And so I got it because I'm on their email list. And it was all about photos and how we experience photos, how we experience photos with our families, with our children. And it asked a lot of really great questions. Well, the survey that I sent out to my little segment of the list had nothing to do with photography. And it just was like, just seeing that just was such a big, um, I don't know, like a moment of, I don't know if clarity is the right word, but just like, it was like a big stop sign almost, or like a, just a big um, symbol of how different this new brand is going to be from the photography community I have been a part of. Not better, not worse, just different. And it's been a part of me, something that has been inside of me for such a long time, but I've been trying to just serve the audience that I've had. And what that's been doing has been holding me back from my my freedom and and frankly like my ability to really help more people. So um so I'm just I'm just on fire right now with different ideas. On Thursday I get to or no, yeah, is it yeah, Thursday. Thursday I am talking to my um to a new brand designer that I had hired. Um I'm going to get a new logo. Like I'm just, I'm just on fire. I'm doing all the like really fun things right now, mapping out like the first pieces of content and, and it's just like, it's just so fun. So anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to, I'm supposed to reflect, not tell you what I'm going to be doing, (laughs) but reflecting on what's been going on, but it's just hard to, I can't leave that part out because like, that's like, I'm just so freaking excited. And that's, I think what has caused me two weeks before our summer vacation has ended to to really be in this reflection mode because I'm just so excited for what's around the corner. And obviously, I'm going to enjoy every last bit of my summer and basically turn work off when they are here. So I'm not worried about that. Like I'm not, I don't feel like I'm missing out on my summer moments because I'm planning ahead. This is like just a I know that I can't really think about my work stuff for the next week and a half after after the next couple days. So June, let's start there. June, the kids got out of school at the very beginning of June. I think it was June 4th. And then they were home about eight or nine days. And then my in-laws came to visit for a nice long weekend. And it was so fun to have them here this time because it was different than their last two trips. This was their third trip down to visit us. They live in Ontario and we live in South Carolina. So the first two times they visited, we kept it pretty touristy. Like we took them to all the places that we found that we've loved. And we've de- we did a few places this time around. But it wasn't like before. Like they were perfectly content just hanging out at our house. So it was like, it was less about the sightseeing. You know what I mean? And it just felt like such a feeling of being settled and not just for us, but for our people that are coming to visit. So it's just, it's been really cool to see that shift when for so long it's been people coming to visit us who have never been to the area and they need to see everything it's not just seeing us not just seeing our house but being in this area they've never been to so it was just really it was just a really beautiful shift that i noticed um keyword noticed i just love that word so much and let's see what else at the beginning of june i bought us a little 15 foot around pool, which you might remember that in the bonus episode I published in June, I talked about um, the ways that I was going to um, just keep 
keep everything charged over the summer, if you will. So that way I felt like I wasn't being completely boxed into being a mom. And that is a really bad choice of, of, of words. But um, but I just, I, I felt like I had all these things that I did at the beginning of the summer to prepare for the summer so that I could make this enjoyable for both the kids and myself. So that way I could have space for my creativity and for my learning and for um, just recharging. But they're also having a really wonderful summer. So, but not always dependent on mom. So that's what I really mean by that. So yeah, we got the pool. Freaking best investment of my life. Seriously. They, especially in the first couple months, they were in and out of the pool probably five times a day. Um, one of my favorite memories was just, they were, they had popsicles and they were on just little $2 and 50 cent floats that were like the they're like the big rectangle floats that you just lay on. Nothing fancy at all. And they're just laying in the pool with their popsicles. And I was just, uh, it was just such a good, I felt like a really great mom, <laughs> great mom in that moment, as simple as that was. And so I don't, I don't remember actually when we got it, but we got a Jeep. It was either the end of May or the beginning of June. I can't remember, but we, when my in-laws were here, they let Dave and I have a day to ourselves, which if you're a parent, I cannot recommend enough day dates instead of night dates. I can't do the nighttime date thing anymore. Like my energy is just done. And if I go out somewhere and have a drink or two or like a big dinner, like I basically am in a food coma after that and just want to go to bed. So I love day dates because it's when I have, like we're energized. So we took the Jeep and we went up into the mountains and, and hit up some new places we had never been, which is like where I thrive up there. And then not to mention being in this brand new freaking Jeep. Well, it wasn't, it's new to us. I think, I think it's a 2000. 16? I don't I don't know. I have no idea. I just know that I love the freaking thing. I love driving it. I've had the top off all summer long and we just took the doors off a few weeks ago. We we didn't do that right away because when you take the doors off of a Jeep, it also takes your side mirrors off. So we ordered some side mirrors that can go on with the doors off. So um that's been just so so fun. And so let's see, my in-laws were here and then they weren't. And then the kids started summer camp. So I think I had mentioned that in that episode in June that I had put the kids in day camp four weeks out of the summer. So they went once in June, twice in July, and then once in August. They're actually, as um, I'm recording this, they are in camp this week. So, um, it's just at the beginning of the summer, it felt like the way that I was describing it was that it was delightful and painful all at once. The kid, this was like, I was very aware that this summer, my babies, they were not, they are not babies anymore. And that was beautiful in terms of like I feel like it was this summer was well earned you know what I mean if you're a parent and you've you've made it through the toddler years and the like where they're where the kids and the babies are just super super needy I feel like I'm on the other side of that which is pretty freaking cool it's also painful <laughs> because it's like what is going on? How, how, how are we here? How is my daughter almost eight years old? That's just crazy. And something that's different about all of that for our family is one of my kids has ADHD and ODD. And last summer, 
could have been the first summer where I felt like, oh, my babies aren't babies anymore. And I, and I actually, I think I did, I even kind of talked about that last year a little bit, but, but this year was like a whole new level because we've, um, we've started treatment on the ADHD, which means I shouldn't say which means, but for us has been night and day. Like I just, I was so afraid to start treatment because I was so afraid of like suppressing a part of my kid. Like it, it, in a way it felt wrong, but the, um, one of the things, and now I'm totally going off <laughs> Wait, This is not what I meant to talk about, but one of the things that helped us, and I, I want to say this, I don't, I don't feel like it's like it's something I really want to get into on my podcast talking about my kids' ADHD and stuff only because it's my kid's story, not my story. But I do want to say that as a parent, it was really, really difficult when we were exploring like our options and figuring out if our kid even had this thing um, because there's so many people in the world that are super judgy and say things like, oh, that's just like like a pharmaceutical thing like it's not even real like and I like I heard people saying that um I actually I got an email in my inbox from somebody that said that they they don't believe in in treatment for for that for kids like it's not right um well one of the things so I want to say this just because I know that there could be people out there who are in that boat where they're like at that crossroads of do we get help or is this wrong and so I just want to say my own opinion, and that is the doctor really helped me in that she told me that without treatment and you let this behavior continue, then the schools and like people in your kid's life can make your kids start to believe that they are bad when they're not. Like it is... a it is something going on in their head that is making them impulsive or whatever. So that was what was going on with my kiddo. We were getting sad notes home from school. We were, um, it, it was just, it was bad. Let's just put it that way. A lot of um, concerns about the impulsivity and the aggressiveness that was coming out of this beautiful little body of this kid who is just, loving and just has the biggest heart of anyone I know. So um, the doctor told me that for, for one, like going without treatment is actually dangerous to their self-esteem because of the way that people will treat them when they are going through those tantrums and those um, that impulsivity and all of that. And two, the second thing that was sort of illuminating for me was she was like, well, if somebody has diabetes, you're not going to not give them the treatment that they need. This is really the same thing, but it's it's for your their mental health. And so I just... I wanted to say that just because I, I've um, I've already I've already had a couple other parents who um, talked to me about this and they um, have seen a difference in in their kids' lives as, as well. And honestly, it's been night and day over here. The second half of the school year, we got like no sad notes home, which was like just a breath of fresh air. And like I I didn't know that I didn't know that we would come this far this fast. And with just that little bit of help. So anyway, way off track on that. Um, so yeah, delightful, painful <laughs> all in one this summer because it, it is feeling like things are going just so fast with them growing up. And then um, now that we're at the end of the summer, it's been delightful and painful. But I would say like I'm I'm just ready for them to go back to school now because like I said, I'm just so inspired and excited to start my new um, business venture. And let's see. So that was June. July, we went on vacation, which was our first vacation as a family in a long time, which when you move out of state, now a lot of our vacations um, go back to um, going to back home to visit family, which is exactly what we did. But we we went to the family cabin mo more than just going back to Michigan or Canada. So um, 
It was such a fun trip. Levi became a little fisherman this trip. They just had such great luck fishing that it was like the best fishing that I've ever witnessed at the cabin in my whole 30 some years of my parents owning that place. It was really fun. And my dad bought an old golf cart. So we went, um, especially like I would take Kendall a lot and drive all the trails. So a lot of the, the roads up there are like two track dirt trails like it's pretty iffy in the winter in the snow if you're going to get in and out of there because the roads are they're just not developed. And so we we enjoyed looking for deer and we saw so many does and their fawns and that was really really fun and just brought me back to my own childhood. So I just I love the cabin. It has a big piece of my heart. And after that, right after we got home, the kids went to camp again, and that is when I, I dug into my brainstorm group about the new community, and I shared, again, this stuff in episode 56, and had this the most like eye-opening, wonderful conversation with Rachel Griman of Green Chair Stories, who... Um, I had hired to write the copy, the copywriting on the sales page for the new community, but she ended up like, we just had basically a coaching call and she was like, Marie, go find another audience. (laughs) Like, this is not your audience. So, um, again, I explained all of that in episode 56. So, so it, it has been since the beginning of July. So about a month ago, I started diving into this new business thing and have been going crazy when it comes to naming this thing. Oh my goodness. Have you ever named your business something other than your name? Because it is so hard. It was so hard this time around because everything felt like it was falling short. Like there was something that was missing to it, which I cannot wait to reveal the actual name I ended up picking. But let's see. We, um, yeah, like the kids, like we got home from vacation. They went to camp twice. So it was like camp. Then they were home, camp again. And I just worked my tail off on shifting into this new business. I'm going to do another episode that will roll out. I'm hoping at the end of September, if not early October, I'm in the, I've been documenting the steps I've been taking for this new business. So you, if you have any questions on this, like if you have anything that you're like, oh, I would love to start a new website and start talking about this certain topic and helping people with that. Um, if you've been curious on like the steps to take, not that I'm like a know-it-all or anything, but If you have any questions, that would fit right into that episode. So feel free to email me at marie at fearlessandframed.com. But let's see, we we did a birthday party in July for my husband. I don't know what it was, but I felt like, like I just wanted to love on him extra hard. And I think part of that came from just this overwhelming feeling of where do I go from here? Because it has been my dream since forever to live in the forest. I never dreamed of living on a small little mountain. Like that is like, that's like extra. (laughs) And, and being near the big mountains and having this family that I have and the Jeep and just the lifestyle that we live that I just was so thankful to him. Not like, I mean, for sure, like he has contributed to help building that as my partner and all of that. But just for, for sharing these dreams with me that aren't always necessarily his dream either. He is just, he is just so good to us in that way. I think that I get on this case a lot about how it doesn't seem like he dreams very much. It doesn't seem like he even like, like, I don't even know what he likes anymore. (laughs) I always say that to him. I'm like, I don't even know. Like, you don't even have any hobbies. Like, what do you even like? All you do is go to work and and come home and 
and be with your family. Like, what what do you like for you? And and I give him a hard time about that sometimes. And it's it's because I'm afraid that he's going to wake up one day and feel like he missed out on his own life. But maybe it is just that that is his dream to be this this role that he is for us. I don't know. So I just I just felt so thankful for him that I wanted to throw him a birthday party that was just for us. So, I mean, we planned this birthday party, the kids and I, mostly me, of course, <laughs> for like, it was like you'd think 25 people were coming over, but it was just the four of us. So as you know, like we had our pool. So I bought a bunch of tiki torches to go around the pool and for on our deck and then, you know, table pong or maybe back in college days, it was beer pong and with the the cups and you fill them up a little bit with beer or liquid of some sort and then you throw the ping pong balls into them so we bought um just a big piece of plywood and dave had some saw horses so we just laid it on on top of that like it was nothing fancy at all and i just happened to have some plastic cups and so i made lemonade and we played that with the kids we kept everything kid friendly and we had the music going and then I bought some globe lights and we we strung them up. Dave went to Home Depot and bought four two by two pieces of wood. He bought four of them and we made like a dance floor that had like globe lights as the ceiling. And then we went like all out and made a ridiculous amount of food. It was so fun. Like we made crab rangoons with this delicious sauce that I made up that was inspired by a plum sauce, but I didn't have any apricot jam, which is what the recipe called for. So I put grape jelly in and oh my goodness, it was so good. Um, We made these mango chicken lettuce wraps. Um, I made a s'mores dip, chips and salsa. Um, We had some fresh fruit. I know I'm missing some things, crock pot meatballs. Like we went all out. Like I said, it was like you would have thought 25 people came over. We made so much food, which was so fun for the next day to have all the leftovers, of course. And at the end of the night, after we swam, like we we played the game, we danced, we swam in the dark with the tiki torches, and then we put our TV out on the deck and watched a movie outside with all the food. And that was, it was just so fun. So that was definitely one of the highlights of July for us. And then it was like, we, so we had this like amazing high in July, right? Like this party was just so fun and just, just, it was just wonderful. And then, um, I lost my cat. So I am still like really, really sad about that. Um, just on Saturday had been over like, I think it was seven or eight days that she's been gone. And I just, oh, I just, it just all came out. I just cried like a baby on Saturday. Um, so long story short, my cat has been an outdoor cat for years now and she's never actually left like my, my house, like my property that I've really noticed. I mean, I'm sure she's wandered off here and there, but it's never been very far. So, um, so I don't know. I don't know what happened and has been, that's, that's been, that's the unknowing what happened has been just so hard, of course, because I don't know if she got lost or if she got attacked or what happened, but, um, she, I got her in 2006 like she's 13 years old. She's been with me longer than I've known Dave. And she's my coffee buddy. Like most mornings I'd go outside and either have coffee um, or just, and just journal outside. Like I love going outside right away. And she was always at my feet every day. Like she, even though she was an outdoor cat, like, it, I mean, she's pretty much still an indoor cat because I'm outside all the time and she was just always there. Um, anytime the kids or myself or Dave was outside, she'd come be with us because she loved us, I guess. So, so that's been really tough. And I, you know, it's, it's been, um, probably nine days now since we've seen her. So who knows? Maybe she'll turn back up. I really hope so. Um, Yeah, so that's been going on. I got involved in a writing intensive this summer. So I've been 
Um, doing a lot of writing. I've got some big projects that I've been working on just for fun, including updating um, my playbook that was or is a part of the preservation project, but I'm making it into its own separate thing because it's been something that the people in the preservation project had really raved about, and I'm going to kind of sell it on its own. And I'm just, I'm so excited for that. I'm really hoping that I get to the point where I actually have it printed and bound and we ship it out in that way. Um, it might just go out as a PDF that people can print on their own at first, but um, but it's it's been really wonderful to work on that, and it's coming with me to the new brand. Um, let's see. I mean, that's really about it for our for our summer. The, all the things that we've done. Um, I've just when I've been being mom more than working, I've been really just trying to to enjoy that. I took the kids up in the mountains a couple times. We have this loop that we really like to do. We went to the Western North Carolina Nature Center, which is like a little zoo. It was really, really cool. And I got them Legos. I don't usually buy them toys outside of Christmas and birthdays, but I I got them Legos and that it has been like that was like awakening for me because they have been building things without instructions and it's like I'm seeing their little brains work and it's just it's been so freaking beautiful um another like kind of a a downer but not really it kind of turned into a funny thing that happened was Dave and I we actually got into a fight a couple weekends ago um, about a week and a half ago now and at the root of it, he just was like, I don't feel appreciated. And I was like, really? I just threw you a birthday party. How is that not appreciating you? And my saving grace was all of this work that I do, that I'm trying to help you, help, helping other people with, with noticing and responding and using documenting as the tool to do those things. Um, a couple weeks ago, well, a couple weeks before the the argument um, was his birthday, and right before that, I had this idea of writing him a love letter. So I was like, okay, well, his birthday is in just a couple days, so maybe I'll just start writing this now since I'm really inspired to do so and give it to him for our 10 year wedding anniversary, which will be in January. So I started that letter a couple weeks ago because I knew that I couldn't just write everything and then give it to him two days later for his birthday. And I know me and I know that I'd be like, oh, I should have said this or like I forgot something. So I wanted to give myself plenty of time to work on it. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to start this now, six months before our wedding anniversary, so I can update it and revise it till my heart's content and know that it's like everything that I want it to be for January. Because the thing with the love letter is that I didn't want it to be just some um, like, I love you. You're the only one for me. I'm yours forever and beyond blah, blah, blah. You make me happy. I wanted it to be something that is more of like proof of how I see him. Like, like I wanted, I feel like so many words, like saying like, I love you. I miss you. Like so many words become so routine. And so they just become so empty and they lose their power. But if you can put into words what like makes the like the meaning of those words like be specific to the person that you're talking about it's just it's beautiful so i had started this letter and i told him like how i how i see his intentions i see his strengths i see his shortcomings but i didn't leave it at that like i i listed out what i think his intentions are and i listed out what I see his strengths are. Like I got really, really specific. So we're in the middle of this fight and we are like, you know, we've raised our voices at each other and we don't fight very often. Let me just say that. Like it is very far and few between 
And I, I can probably count how many times we've really gotten into it, probably five times. I mean, we, we definitely bicker for sure, but we don't really have any like big blow up fights and things like that. So as he's like telling me like wh- how he feels and he's like telling me that he doesn't feel appreciated and I'm like, appreciated, I threw you this big party and you know what? And I went and I got my notebook and I was like, how's this for appreciation? And I showed him the my start to my love letter and which he didn't read it at that moment because I'm like, we're just kind of telling each other what we think at that moment. But like right after we go outside on the deck and I, I read it to him and he cried like a baby. He'd probably kill me for saying this on here, but, but that's what happened. And so, um, so that was something that was kind of like a low and a high, like, all in one. So, so yeah, that is all my summer in a nutshell. I truly would love to hear from you and what's been going on for your season. It might not be the summer where you're at, depending on where you're at in the world, but seriously, email me Marie at fearlessandframed.com. I might not reply right away because I get um, a lot of emails and and I'm not working at my computer 24-7, but but I do read all the emails and it might take me a couple days or a couple weeks to respond, but but I will. Um, so yeah, that's that's what's been going on. Um, let's get into the Q&As because I feel like I've been talking forever and I still have like other things that I like, haven't even really touched on, but but maybe I'll save those for later. So Q and A's, I'm going to pick three. They came from that survey I mentioned at the beginning. And if you have any questions for me about my life, about my work, anything you're curious about, especially when it comes to this, this noticing and responding stuff that I've been talking about, um, definitely send me an email. So question number one, and all of these were anonymous, so I don't know who they came from, but do you always feel understood? And that was a big fat flying no out of my mouth as soon as I read that question. I am so weird in real life and I always have been. Like I've always been liked. Everybody, like in my yearbooks, when people sign the yearbooks, I'm pretty sure like I probably could have been the person voted most nice or most kind. Like everybody just has always talked about how kind I am. And so I've never, like, I never felt like I was so, like, weird that people would make fun of me, so to speak. Um, I definitely have a bullying story, but that's, I'll save that for another time. But I feel like the relationships I've made online since starting my business, specifically the with the people who I have moved over to Voxer, who I'm talking with, like, a lot, or I have frequent, like, scheduled calls with... Like, so they've, they're not just like online friends anymore. Like they're more than that. Um, a a lot of them I've met in real life. These are the people who I feel like really get me. And it's because like the relationship started of a place of like, you just have to get to know who I am and like me for who I am, which is different than a lot of the relationships that get started or that I've known all my life in real life. Like even Dave, my husband, he doesn't always understand me, but he respects me and he provides a safe space for me to be vulnerable and to share how I feel, but he definitely doesn't really get me or understand me, so to speak. So to be honest, and this is a total weakness on my part, I avoid getting to know new people in real life, especially because I feel like my life is so different than most people. Um, A lot of people here in South Carolina are really big into their faith. There's a lot of people around here, I find, who are stay-at-home moms, um, which is fine. I'm like zero judgment on my part, but it's almost like I feel like I've got nothing to talk about. Like I just feel like I have nothing that really relates because I... Like, I'm just so ambitious. I'm very, like, I take recharging my own battery very seriously. So um, I know a lot, it just seems like a lot of the people that I meet, like, they, they're like full-time moms, which is wonderful for them. But it's like, 
Like, I just feel like I feel bad for being myself in a way, I guess is the best way to put it. And I find a lot of people who who think that they hear like, oh, she works from home. That means I can go play all the time. So I'm always afraid to tell people that I work from home, that I'm meeting, because then it's like, they just think that I can go do whatever I want, which to an extent I can, but I take my creativity and my work very, very seriously. Um, Or I find that people start asking for favors, whether that's in photography or marketing help. And that very quickly, like I love helping other people. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes it crosses the line and it starts to feel like an obligation or I just feel I am the type of person who just feels bad for saying no. So um, I will say no, but I hate it. So um, yeah, like I just feel very misunderstood in a lot of ways, but I don't feel misunderstood when it comes to the audience I've created online and the friendships that have blossomed through this online business, which is just, has just been a total gift, of course. So question number two, um, they asked, what's your priority, family, work, or something else? And immediately my mental health is what came up. And this was like, it was a hard one to kind of explain because I I'll be I don't suffer from like anxiety or depression, at least not that I'm aware of. If I do, it's like I'm high functioning because I'm just my brain and everything is just always on go. Um, which is both good and not good. <laughs> but work is not work to me. It's my play in a lot of ways. I mean, I definitely play in a lot of other ways that don't revolve around work, like taking my Jeep for a joy ride and things like that. But work is my play that brings in an income. So I take it very seriously, but how it's looked through the years has really ebbed and flowed with my family. Like it's, I don't have a perfect balance. It's not blended in a perfect way, but these things just sort of ebb and flow together. My kids are almost six and eight now. So in a way, there's a lot of things that are a lot easier. Like most of the summer, I had a good 90 minutes before the kids woke up. So I would wake up and I I would write for like an hour or, or listen to the, the class that I've been taking on writing um, and doing like things for myself. And when I feel like I can charge my battery up in that way, the rest of the day, I am like, is just, everything is just golden. So in that way, it's been easier because when Levi was little and he's my younger one, he, I remember at one time he had had 14 prescriptions for his ears. He had ear tubes and, um, just always had infections. He had two sets of ear tubes actually. And the kid, like, he didn't sleep through the night and he was just always sick. Like, it was just, there's always something. So back then, work and being mom, like, together was so much harder than it is today. I would also, and I still do, like, I'm usually the parent who does all the doctor appointments. I'm the one home with them over holidays and snow days and their sick days and things like that because Dave is the one who carries our health insurance and obviously we want to save his vacation time for fun not for these sorts of things so that both blessing and a burden has always fell on me which means that I've had to put work on the back burner at that time but also during that time when those things would pop up I was more um, I don't how it's the best word. Like I just like I made sure that because those things happened, that wasn't an excuse for me not to do the other things that I wanted to do for myself, for my creativity and my work. So sometimes I'd kick my family out. <laughs> I know that sounds really harsh, but but I would. I would say, Dave, 
I need a day. I need to be able to do X, Y, and Z projects. Um, or I just need some time at the house. And he would take the kids and he would go do something with them for like six hours. And that would allow me to charge up my own battery as well. Um, Sometimes I would be the one who would leave and I would go do what my infamous writing retreats. A lot of you may have heard of that. If not, I'll link to, in the show notes, I'll link to the blog post that I wrote about my writing retreats. I used to do, do those I don't know, like once a quarter, once every six weeks or so where I'd go stay at a hotel. I'd book a hotel usually for Saturday and Sunday nights. So I'd go there Saturday afternoon. I'd have all of Sunday to myself and I would leave first thing Monday morning or sometimes I would even leave Sunday night and just give up that second night. But I just, I wanted to make sure I had the whole day to do what I need, what I wanted to do. So I would do little things like that. I've always invested also in part-time childcare, even if I wasn't working and business was not on the table, I need that time to recharge. So, so that question of, you know, what do I prioritize my family, my work or something else? It's my mental health. So I just, I kind of like jump into work for as long as it feels good to be working. And as soon as I start to get that, that, uh, mom guilt or I'm just tired and don't feel like working anymore, then I switch gears into the other thing. So I wouldn't say I prioritize either one. I just pay attention to my energy more than anything. And and I don't mean like energy, how much can I do? But I just mean like, um, like if I'm getting irritable, irritable with the kids and like, I, I just went nine days with having the kids home from, um, they're in camp this week. And so this past weekend, I was so irritable because I just started to feel like my creativity and all of the things that are me would have been suppressed lately. Now that we're getting towards the end of the summer, I think they're getting a little bit bored. So um, Dave gave me some extra time by taking the kids out of the house yesterday for about four hours. I haven't had to do that in a really long time, but the circumstances were different in that they were home for the last nine days. During the school year, I don't really need to do those things that much because they're both in school five days a week now. So anytime that they've got something going on at the school or sick days, holidays, things like that, like it's just like a little blip in the map anymore. It's it's not a big deal like it used to be when they were home a lot more and they weren't in school five days a week. So I will say my physical health is being neglected right now. But I know that once the kids go back to school, that will get better because I tend to work for a few hours and I always leave some room in my day to walk or go on a hike or do something, but I've just gotten away from it over the summer. So that's that. And then I've got one more question, which was, um, what was something that helped you live presently in each, in both work and family. So excuse my French, but I think being present is a bunch of shit. I plan to talk a lot more on this topic later, but I think, like, when I think of being present and what that means, to me that, like, when I hear that being talked about, it's Be in the moment and meaning like you're not daydreaming of all the to-dos and the dreams and the the worries and the fears and the lack and all the things that are in your minds and you're just, you're in the moment. You're playing with your kids. You're sitting in stillness stillness and, and all of that. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but to me, that's no better than sleepwalking through your life. I documented myself awake. Like I feel like years ago now I have been jolted into this level of awakeness and that's why I'm starting this new business that's around these topics. So to me, it's like, you know, forget being present and trying to be present all the time and be conscious, pay attention to the way that you think. Practicing intentional documentary is what taught me that the five part 
practice that I created a couple years back. You can hear the first four parts in episode 31, I think it is. I'll link to it in the show notes of this episode, but it's not about making pictures and printing them. It has nothing to do with that. I mean, technically those could be steps that you take on the inside of that. But consciousness is what episode 46 was about. Awareness is a gift was the name of that episode. So um, so if you want to hear more on that topic, definitely listen to that. Um, to me, like in the short way of saying it, that this consciousness is a high level of observation and awareness of all the stories that are going around going on around you. It's seeing a layer deeper. It's seeing with more depth. It's seeing like through the thick of life and the crap that you're in and through the to-dos, like you really have a grip on the things that matter. And it's it's also this beautiful intersection of the past, the present, and the future. It is just the most incredible way of seeing the world around you. And and it's happening like with just what you're observing on the outside, like the things happen going on around you, but also internally, like in your thoughts and in your heart. It's when I feel most alive personally. Um, and I feel like it in so many different ways. Like I feel like feel like that when I'm playing. I feel like that when I'm recording these podcast episodes or when I'm writing a newsletter or when I'm just sitting on the porch or journaling or when I'm driving through the mountains in my Jeep and I'm sticking my my feet and my arm out the door that's not on and feeling the, the wind in my fingertips. It's when I'm reading. It's when I'm expressing and writing. And like, I am the type of person through because of this, I am so energized and excited about life that I can't freaking sit still. I'm inspired by sunny, warm days and and being in the forest. I'm inspired by quiet mornings when I get to journal and charge myself up and then my babies wake up and I get to just snuggle the heck out of them. I'm inspired when I go to pick up groceries, just completely thankful that I didn't have to go into the store to pick out the groceries, that I get to do the curbside pickup. Someone else did the shopping and I don't have to worry about a budget for for grocery shopping. Like I'm so aware of so many little stories around every little situation that it is like completely made me high on life, (laughs) to be frank. I get frustrated. I get overwhelmed. I get annoyed like everyone else in the world. But at the root of it, it's almost always when I am feeling those things, it's because I feel like I'm being slowed down. But I'm, I'm, you've probably heard this phrase before because it's kind of trendy in the in the world of people who are trying to live um, a meaningful life and on purpose and intentional and all the the pretty words. But like, I really do believe that life is happening for me. Um, I learned that from Susan Ferraro, who was my guest in episode thirteen. So because of the way that I see my resilience and my confidence and my fulfillment from life is so high that I don't need to try to be present anymore. Like I feel like I live way more present than most people because I live um, just so awake. And that's what I want is I want to experience more of that awakeness and that consciousness because that births presence through intentionality, through the choices that we make. So like, for example, I, I drove to Ingalls in the Jeep on Sunday. Ingalls is a local grocery store. And it felt like vacation. Just that little thing, just that little like bit of my day, like just such a normal part of my day. And it felt like just like the best thing ever. I also, and this is sort of like a little bit different, but I downsized my house from a big, beautiful, my dream house, my dream layout with like the best windows of my life that was 3,200 square feet to this tinier 1,900 square foot home. And I did that on purpose. I mean, Dave and I did that on purpose. It wasn't all me for sure. Dave and I have built this lifestyle together that feels spacious most of the time 
And it all comes back to that, that awareness. So I hope that's helpful. I have been talking your ear off, all of you who are listening. Thank you so much for, for sticking with me. I Like I said, I just wanted to, to take this time to reflect on the season with you and let you know what's been going on with um, with me, both just in my life and then also in my business. And, and I really enjoyed reading the questions that have come in. So if you have any questions for me, um, Marie at fearlessandframed.com, I'll be happy to answer those. And let's see, next the next episode, we've got the story of the month. And then I've got a really wonderful conversation I had with photographer um, Lindsay Davis, who she doesn't do photography professionally. She just does, she documents her own family. She is a mom of five kids. She homeschools them all. And she has like a big story around like what has made documenting matter to her. And I cannot wait for you to hear it in a couple episodes. So, so thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next time. Stay awake for your stories and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening. If you've got a quick sec, leave a review. Utilize that space to let me know what spoke to you out of today's episode, what questions were sparked from you. Every single time that I hear from you, you spark ideas in me that I put right back into the podcast for you. So it's win-win, right? You can always hit me up over on Instagram at Fearless and Framed is my handle. And as always, you can go to fearlessandframed.com forward slash intentional documentary podcast for this episode's show notes and any mini mags and past show notes. All the goodness is over there. And until next time, what are you going to preserve next? Talk to you soon.